That's me waving hello everybody and also to signal to the uh, sound guys that we're ready to start. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I use the term gentlemen loosely. Welcome to the 25th annual Pony Awards. This is Alex's laptop. I think I should allow. <laughs> oh, we don't, we don't have the screen. All right, never mind. Okay. So, uh, we are really excited about the Pony Awards this year. There's been a lot of interesting things happening in information security and the security world over the last year and we're here to celebrate the successes and more importantly the failures um, in both of those regards because we're the information security community, all we do is celebrate people's failures. So our successes are someone else's failures, it's just the nature of the game. Um, and just because we're bad people. Um, myself especially included. So I'd like to uh, announce a few new things. Um, first, you'll see some, uh, some new faces up here for, I assume everyone here has been to all 25 or all 24 of the other Pony Awards so I don't need to introduce any of us. Um, but I am, my name is Dino Dizovi. Uh, I hacked a Mac once. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one uses those. <laughs> um, and I think that's really all I've done so I don't really know why I'm here. Um, but I'd like to introduce another new judge, uh, Brandon Edwards, Dr. Raid. Um, he technically was here last year but he just came from a hobo fight so that didn't count. <laughs> uh, we have H.D. Moore <laughs> who's been with us from the beginning for some reason. Um, we have ‑‑ quit. <laughs> I know because we won't let him quit. We have Alex Sodorov <laughs> who, who Alex and I founded the awards because we wanted to hand awards ‑‑ we wanted someone to hand awards to ourselves but no one was so we decided that we'd hand awards to other people instead because we're horrible people. Um, we have Mark Dowd also with us from the beginning. He, he lives in Australia and that's very commendable. We have another new judge, the lovely Justine. Somehow we convinced her to join us and uh, she does not know how sorry she will be. <laughs> and to her left we have another new face, another lovely face. <laughs> Chris Valasek who you might recognize, with applaud now. You might recognize him from The Daily Show where he interviewed Charlie Miller and Carson Daly for their amazing hack of a car. All right. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to start with the first category of best client side vulnerability with Dr. Raid. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, wait. Wait, what? I don't know. Then you, you need to freestyle this whole thing. If he wants me to freestyle, oh, this is going to be too hard. <sighs> I'd rather try and hide and eat cyanide than try to way to work YAML into client side. <laughs> All right, I don't know. Um, these are, uh, yeah, so client side, I actually I can't read because I'm blind, so you guys probably read these better. But um, best client side award, obviously it's the, uh, it's the hot, hot thing now apparently in hacking the, uh, for things we hit on clients, not server sides, which I, I, I still think for personally are best, but uh, we'll talk about that later. Um, first plug we. Oh, yeah, that's server side. <laughs> I know I told you I can't read. I don't, I've been illiterate for, 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 yeah, I don't even, all right. All right, the first bug we, uh, the first nominee was WebKit SVG element uh, type confusion bug. Uh, it was a use after free in, in browsers, uh, show 2012, so type confusion is the new hotness. Um, I don't know too much about this bug actually, but uh, I'm, I'm a new judge so I'm going to lie about it and say it was, uh, it was confusing an integer with something else. Um, <laughs> Uh, it was used, but it, it was pretty cool. Uh, it was used to leak out an address of Chrome.dll for uh, ROP gadgets, and um, yeah, good stuff. Popping Chrome. Um, <laughs> the next one was the uh, W Flash Player regexp ov uh, overflow. Um, I also don't know anything about this bug, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're fired. I'm fired. It's just the worst judge ever. I'm just going back to being a, a nominee. Um, downgraded. All right. Next bug is uh, Microsoft Internet uh, Explorer VML. Uh, credit goes to, uh, to Vupin. 
Um, at Cantec West, they, uh, they dropped this exploit as an injure overflow um, and the vector markup language and uh, it was pretty, pretty good and we, I, I, I really like the Voopin guys, pretty cool exploit. Um, and then the last one was, uh, looks like Adobe, Adobe Reader, what is that? Um, Adobe Reader buffer overflow and sandbox escape. Uh, this was found by FireEye, uh, sophisticated in that it, it was a, a initial landing um, and it was all raw payload to break out of the sandbox, which is pretty cool. Discovered in the wild. Oh, it was, yeah, discovered in the wild. Um, so, oh, yeah, I don't, we don't know, unknown. Um, a little nervous, being a judge, I don't know why. Um, so the winner is, oh, you gotta how do we, uh, <laughs> Adobe Reader. Would the author of that amazing exploit and the uh, carry who carried out that attack please step forward to accept the award? <laughs> would someone who would like to take the rap for that come up and accept the award? Really? No one? Come on. Oh, all right. Oh, J Duck will. Wait, is that, that who it was? All right. <laughs> all right. Focus on. In between uh, each of these nominations, we um, we also be playing songs. Uh, so we will start with uh, Dale Chase. These are the songs, for obviously, for best song nominations. Um, we'll start with Dale Chase, "SSH to Your Heart," featuring, featuring Shannon Morse. Next is Server Side. <laughs> Alright, that'll do. Because now it's the important one, the server side, which is the old school bug, which is where I come from. These are the only types of bugs that matter in my world. Great. Right. Alright, so first up, Ruby on Rails with YAML, with credit to Ben Murphy. Um, remote SQL and arbitrary Ruby code execution. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm switching the tabs. To which, which, to which? First one, uh, and then scroll up. It's and then scroll up. Back seat drivers here. Right, and then scroll up. Because yeah. we're not doing it in order. Yeah. There we go. All right. Uh, so that's great. Ruby on Rails, bunch of arguably useful websites. Web <laughs> 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 Uh, crypto, which is always the big brains in the room, so much admiration here. Uh, cryptographic flaws in Oracle database authentication. I believe it required a username and a database name, and I'm pretty impressed with that. Uh, SAP router remote heap overflow, always good to own the enterprise software. And uh, that's credit to Gregory Nasenko. Uh, exploitable heap overflows. I come from the stack overflow generation, so I'm always impressed by a heap overflow. Asterisk stack overflow, kind of old school. I can, I can relate to that one. Thanks to Brandon here. Uh, and also arguably useful software. <laughs> uh, and I believe the last one, Nginx overflows, also stack overflows by my fellow countryman, Greg McManus. So um, kudos for that stack overflow. And the winner is Asterisk. Woo! Our friend Brandon here. Congratulations, Brandon. Wait, wait. I, I really wait, want to thank wait, the wait, wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. By Pony Awards bylaws, chapter seven, subsection three, all Pony Award judges are are eligible for nomination, but are ineligible to oh. win. Oh. 
You gotta pick your fame. Pick your fame. <laughs> In that case, I have a runner up. <laughs> All right, we have with credit to Ben Murphy, Ruby on Rails, and YAML. Do we have Ben Murphy? This is a problem with the strategy for the <laughs> Pony Awards. <laughs> All right, anyway, we'll uh, mail it to him, I guess. <laughs> okay, so next song. Something about format strings. That's enough of that one. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to be presenting about the, uh, the best privilege escalation bug. Uh, this is actually a really tough category this year. There was a couple of epic nominations. Um, so the first one is uh, a recent Linux kernel uh, perf SW events init bug um, by SD at fucksheep. Uh, <laughs> Now, uh, Mr. Fuck Sheep did a really good job because <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically uh, it was later ported by um, Spender and GeoHot so, uh, to different architectures. So you know you've uh, you've done pretty well when that happens. Um, secondly, of course, we can't have a uh, a privilege escalation bug without mentioning Tavis Ormandy or Win32K. Um, so we're going to do that both at the same time and. Uh, 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 this is a, a fairly recent bug that uh, Tavis disclosed as well. Um, it was a uh, ePath object uninitialized pointer bug. Um, the cool thing about this was uh, Tavis was uh, basically giving us a running commentary as he built the exploit, getting past the hurdles on public mailing lists, and everyone else is just like, what the hell is going on? So it's pretty <laughs> sweet. Um, the next, uh, uh, we have the iOS kernel privilege escalation by. Um, David Wang, uh, Planet Being and the Evaders. Uh, this was part of the, the jailbreak uh, by Evaders um, where they were quite well named because they proceeded to evade the shit out of everything, every protection iOS had. So it was pretty impressive. There, there was a number, of, uh, a number of bugs. The kernel bug was a, uh, a trusted pointer issue but they also had to get past code signing and all that kind of stuff. So it was a, a, pretty, complicated, a pretty complicated attack. And, uh, and finally, we have uh, the trust zone exploit by, uh, by Dan Rosenberg. Um, uh, I like to call him Dandroid. Uh, he basically did one of the first, uh, one of the first public uh, trust zone level exploits in, uh, in, in Motorola's, uh, Motorola's phones. So um, that's all the nominations. Um, uh, do we have a drum roll? Uh, and the winner is iOS. The evaders. <laughs> uh, yeah, Planet Being did the. Come and come and get the award. Someone actually showed up. Awesome. I feel like he should get an additional pony for uh, being the one that showed up, <laughs> being the only person who showed up. Um, I'm, uh, this is uh, <laughs> apparently not. Okay, uh, this is uh, one of the the best song nominations as well. It's called Safe. Well, I guess it would be nice.
song goes straight to my heart. <laughs> so the next category is Pony for Most Innovative Research. Um, this is one of my favorite categories uh, at the Ponies. It really highlights all the really good work uh, that we see from the security community. Uh, and there have been some really, really good submissions uh, this year. So first we have the Crime Attack by Juliano Rizzo and Tai Duong. Uh, I think this is the third time in a row that they have broken SSL. And uh, but what's even more impressive than breaking SSL is the uh, names that they come up with for their attacks. Um, crime is a pretty, pretty good name. I hear that their next one is going to be even better. Um, the next nomination is uh, for the work by uh, Joru and Ginvel Coldwind. Uh, it's called Identifying Exploiting Windows Kernel Race Conditions via memory access patterns. Uh, they build a very impressive system for finding uh, time of check, time of use vulnerabilities in the kernel. Uh, and they also uh, came up with some pretty cool new ways of exploiting them. They could slow down the execution of single instructions uh, by like a huge factor. Uh, something that hasn't really been done on this scale before. So very, very impressive work. Then uh, we have a joint nomination to uh, Packet, whose name is Paul, and Dion Blazakis. Um, it's for their work on leaking uh, information from browsers using the garbage collector and hash tables. Uh, they presented this in a joint presentation at SummerCon, and uh, I think they've talked about it individually before then. Uh, so I, th I think this really highlights kind of where research is going. Um, they're, they're finding some pretty cool new ways of uh, getting information from places where you shouldn't be able to get information from. The next nomination goes to the Pagefold Liberation Army, uh, which is the uh, title of a paper by uh, Julian Bank Bangard and Sergey Bratis. Uh, in this paper they described how they managed to turn the MMU of a modern CPU into a Turing complete machine and were performing arbitrary computation uh, using page faults without actually executing any instructions. Um, <laughs> pretty, pretty impressive work. Uh, I hear next they're going to work on a Turing, Turing, Turing complete uh, computation using carrier pigeons. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and then the final nomination goes to uh, an academic paper which is a rarity in the Pony Awards called Practical Timing Side Channel Attacks Against Kernel Side ASLR. Um, I highly recommend everybody read the paper. It's actually pretty, very, pretty, pretty well written. Um, the authors figured out uh, how to do timing attacks uh, against kernel ASLR. And uh, I, th I think that also notice that two of the nominations uh, involve uh, timing attacks to perform info leaks. So that, that's a pretty hot area for research. So for next year, please come up with uh, something even better. So the winner of the most innovative research pony is Boxbone, Joru and Gimbel Caldwin. Are they, are they in the audience? Yes, they are. We had really good luck with picking winners uh, this year. Uh, a lot of them are actually here. If you'd like to say a few words. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I would like to thank Microsoft for, well, the kernel and Win32K. Thank you. <laughs> They get two ponies since the previous winners didn't show up. <laughs> so next song. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this one is from a vendor. Hey Jackson, can we go to Watchstar? <laughs> Take it by the watch, don't you see? 
Pacino So fuck the motherfucker Yeah, we got fucking one around Here we're trying to come see All they say is Can you imagine Who has AP? Oh wait. All right, go back. But snaps not everyone can be watched guard. Yeah. Did, did you guys notice that advanced technique? Take notes. <laughs> All right. Let's fade that back up. All right. So now I'm doing a topic that is near and dear to my heart. And that is failing. <laughs> so the pony for the epic fail is like it's I, what I love. Nothing more is in seeing someone just like lost in their own world, giving their all, and then just tripping up and just failing spectacularly. Because again, it's okay to no, it's not okay to fail. <laughs> it's only okay to fail because it provides enjoyment for the rest of us. Because we celebrate other people's failures. Again, we're bad people. Um, so let's go through some of the most epic fails of the last year. And I'm going to zoom in because, like, I'm old. I can't. Bigger. Get that a lot. <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> All right. Epic fail. First one goes to CryptoCat. So if none of you know what CryptoCat is or ever used it, good for you. Because. <laughs> What CryptoCat is, is a web application that provides a false sense of security that may in some cases get you killed. Um, so apparently cryptography is harder than writing JavaScript. And because you can write JavaScript does not mean you should use cryptography correctly. Again, we're being harsh on someone who's trying to do good and trying to make something useful, but uh, I don't remember where I was going with that, but we're just still making fun of it. Um, <laughs> I couldn't write crypto code, but that's, I don't try. I don't, I don't take on that responsibility, which is good, because otherwise it'd be worse actually. So um, a guy by the name of Steve Thomas wrote a tool called DecryptoCat which through a variety of attacks uh, uh, destroyed just about two years of CryptoCat's implementation. So um, apparently writing crypto code is hard. Let's go write an antivirus engine instead. Uh, the next epic fail goes to Sophos. Um, which is epically demonstrated by Tavis because for some ‑‑ I don't ‑‑ did anyone know what Sophos did to Tavis? Because like he, he's like the Count of Monte Cristo with them. Like he will not give up until they're destroyed. Uh, <laughs> maybe if they win and we give them the award, Tavis will let them like go a year of their lives without being humiliated in front of all you. <laughs> we can hope or not. Actually, I kind of like humiliating them because it's fun. Um, and speaking of humiliation and things I like to humiliate, uh, the Android master key vulnerability. Um, apparently you can man in the middle and modify APKs. Actually, well, the man in the middle is another attack, but whatever. Um, you can modify APKs because the, you would duplicate the manifest, I think, and um, just change the application transparently. Apparently that's bad because the whole reason you have code signing is to make sure that can't happen. So that's kind of a fail. But the whole thing that you try and do doesn't actually work out. Um, <laughs> in the epic, the epic irony fail, the <laughs> <laughs> the U.S. Economic Development Administration had a little bit of a malware problem and so they created a lot of uh, economic development for the PC manufacturers by destroying a bunch of mice and, keyboard, mice and keyboards because, you know, it generates economic activity having to buy all new ones for no good reason. Um, and by taking all that taxpayer money and applying it to something absolutely useless, that gives the opportunity to get more taxpayer money and something, 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 supply side economics, job creators, Right. All right. <laughs> and, and this one goes to Hacking Magazine, um, which uh, I think many of us are familiar with Hacking Magazine. Um, they email us a lot. <laughs> um, and there's an article published in them uh, which the, uh, I'm just going to read a paragraph um, and Mark here is going to do a uh, interpretive dance to it. <laughs> if you encourage him enough. <laughs> All right. The concept of autonomous methodologies has been studied before in the literature. Next, the well-known framework by David Johnson et al. does not store small talk as well as our method. Further, Wilson and Zhao originally articulated the need for the understanding of linked lists. It remains to be seen how valuable this research is to the software engineering community. Ultimately, the methodology of our Zhao is, et al. is a theoretical choice for the exploration of superpages. Our design 
wait for it, avoids this overhead. <laughs> Did you like that gravitas? I've been practicing. So we, thank you. We think that sums up basically everything that all of us aspire to is to make something as intelligible as a randomly generated text and get that published <laughs> in a magazine. So, the winner is Hacking Magazine. Do we, do we have a representative from Hacking Magazine who would like to come forward and accept the award? So do you know what happens when no one accepts the awards? You think we save them for further ‑‑ you think we save them for next year? No. We burn them. Oh, good. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey. Sorry. Thank you. Speech. The reason I'm accepting this is uh, Hack and Nine has been up on errata. Uh, they've been documented as charlatans for a long time. So I'm either going to auction this for cash and give it to a charity or I'll mail it to him with a big fuck you. <laughs> We'd like to thank Jericho for saving one of these ponies from the, the special showers. <laughs> Dual core. I, I couldn't hear that. So this started last year when we were playing B-sides, uh, virus from DC9, 4, 9, 7, B. Hey, drink all the booze, hack all the things. That's how we're doing it this year. Not every geek with a Commodore 64 can hack into NASA. Fancy Mac thing. Let's see how this works. Yeah, how does this work? You hack these things, right, Dan? <laughs> Once. All right. So uh, this pony is uh, one of my favorite. Uh, actually, it is my favorite. It's uh, not quite as uh, uh, fun as Dino's, and that you get to watch someone fail awfully. But sometimes you do. Um, so the pony for epic ownage is really to um, uh, this one we give to whoever uh, causes the most epic ownage, basically uh, the source of it. So the, the fail vendor, the, the fail award goes to whoever failed the hardest. The ownage award goes to whoever, you know, caused the fail the hardest if you want. Um, so the categories this year are the first one is Internet Census 2012, which is freaking awesome. Uh, the background of this, some crazy bastard uh, compromised, uh, what, 1.2 million embedded devices, used them to support, sorry? No, I've got a different scan, I've got a different project. No. Oh. So this guy basically broke into 1.2 million embedded routers, installed a custom uh, binary on them, used them to port scan the entire internet for a year straight. Not a single threat intelligence firm on the freaking planet noticed until he published a 20 page paper on it, gave away 10 terabytes of data via torrent and documented the whole damn thing. <laughs> and the funny thing about it is like I've actually gone through the process of, of decompressing it, going through the data, verifying it. It's freaking real. Like this guy actually did all the work and dumped it all for free and not a single vendor, a single monitoring agency, a single, you know, anybody noticed it until they came out and said, hey guys, I hacked all your stuff. Thanks. Here's some data. Bye. <laughs> so it was freaking awesome. 
yeah, he, he definitely hacked all the things. I don't know what he drank, but it must have been good. So, uh, <laughs> the second nomination here is for uh, Mudge or Peter uh, Zacco, if uh, if you aren't cool. Um, so Mudge uh, is being nominated for hacking the government. Uh, his work in the DARPA Fast Track program, which is sadly finished, uh, covered over 100 different projects across the community. Um, I think just about everyone who's attended Black Hat knows someone who knows somebody who worked on a cyber fast track program. Uh, it's just an amazing amount of effort, did a great job with it. I think uh, he definitely touched a lot of things that, and had an impact that's much harder than most people can do. So, for hacking the government and giving away millions of dollars to random hackers do crazy shit, much. The next nomination is uh, pretty damn funny. Um, so if anyone's familiar with all the uh, uh, media whoring that happened over RSA related to APT1 and the Mandiant papers and all the people who followed on that in the press and so on and so on, uh, these other guys did it better and they, in my opinion they did it right. Uh, instead of just documenting APT1, they went through and basically compromised every single one of APT1's command and control servers. Um, they identified uh, all the poison IV command and control systems on the internet. They downloaded the custom binary, extracted the password, cracked the password using a custom plugin for John the Ripper. Um, basically just tore this thing freaking apart until they owned the entire CNC's. In the process they found another custom rat, another backdoor password, cracked that password, scanned all those systems, owned all those boxes and just kept going through this whole process. And the nice thing about it is they actually contacted us in the Metasploit team and said, hey guys, here's an updated module with new targets, new offsets. Oh yeah, we added another module for this other rat. Thanks and bye. So there's some people can actually talk about finding an APT or talk about talking CNC. These guys freaking owned all of them in the process. So the funny thing about it is the next person who's going to go through and say, hey, look, we identified all these CNCs. Here's all of our blacklisted IPs. They're probably identifying the people who own this CNC, not the CNC itself at this point. So it'll be fun to see what happens with it. But that's the nominations for. And that's for malware.lu. And it's always fun. Uh, uh, last nomination by sheer volume from submissions. Um, was a, a joint nomination to Edward Snowden and the NSA. And the, uh, the nomination is really about how Edward Snowden was able to leak such a massive amount of data by, you know, one, taking a job specifically to gain access to a company and to the agency's files to then steal them all to then leak them all. And how well that worked, how uh, no amount of background checks or top secret clearance can prevent an insider from destroying your entire organization and shutting down your country and, you know, having you sick, you know, drones after some 29 year old in Russia or at least, you know, talking about on TV. Um, so it's just an amazing example of how uh, not only did someone uh, compromise the entire, you know, internal document store of this agency and then steal the documents and share them all, um, but he also made us realize that everything we have is owned. So you may have owned 1.2 million boxes with the Internet Census Project, the NSA, the NSA has owned everything else. Uh, so for that we'd like to give the award to Snowden. Um, if you're here, please come up. Uh, I think we saw you earlier. <laughs> Alternately, uh, General Alexander, if you're here as well, would like to accept on his behalf. <laughs> we're willing to give you the award as well. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I heard that Snowden's plane got delayed, so maybe a little bit late. But and apologize not for doing the drum roll there, but I figured it was obvious at that point. <laughs> cool. And sorry. That's, that's fair. Uh, do you have another song? Is that it for some? No, okay. Yep, and with that, we're going to hand it over to Chris. I no, 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 uh, believe right. Oh, you go. Yeah. All right, so I, uh, I'm a previous song winner myself, so uh, they they made me do this two time actually, yeah, twice. Um, and they they thought I was most eligible to do that since I can't read and use the MacBook or do anything else judging effectively. Um, so to go over the names again of uh of who we had for the songs. Um, the first song we listened to was SSH To Your Heart by Dale Chase featuring Shannon Morse. <laughs> Romantic. Um, the second song was Format String by Nyan. Uh, not yet another nerd or something. Not your average, not nerd. Your average nerd. Um, the third song was, oh, let's give a round of applause for that song as well, please. <laughs> the third song was uh, another, uh, another beautiful piece called Safe by Michael Shea. Shay, Michael Shea, I pardon my pronunciation. And then we heard, uh, after that we heard WatchGuard Security Shop by WatchGuard. And the song we heard most recently was All the Things by Dual Core. And the winner for this year's pony. It's Dr. Red Clockwork. No, I'm kidding. It's uh, it's dual core, all the things. 
You here, Dolcor? I believe this is his second pony as well, so uh, I, I, I'm gonna give you just a, a huge round of applause for that. Freestyle. 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 Um, I'd actually like to forego uh, a freestyle on this and um, dedicate this pony to uh, a hacker that I know that embraced the hyperbole of the hook, drink all the booze, hack all the things. And so I dedicate this pony to Barnaby Jack. Okay, so uh, everyone's doing good, doing all right. Cricket, all right. Uh, thanks to these guys for having me. I'm easily the most unqualified person to be on this panel, so I guess I'm a charity case. <laughs> so uh, we're we're gonna give uh, a lifetime achievement award this year, and uh, I think a lot of people in this room remember him as a guy who hacked ATMs or pacemakers. And I think some of the older people in this room will remember him as the dark spirit uh, writing Win32 buffer overflows, right? Yeah. Uh, I think everyone on this panel could definitely, definitely call this guy a friend. Uh, me personally, uh, I love the man. He was never, never uh, didn't put a smile on my face. Uh, always had a blast. Uh, super, just just an all-around good guy. When you walked in to the bar, you everyone wanted to be around him. Uh, you know, girls wanted to be around him, guys wanted to be him. Like he was just uh, a charming person and uh, and a good dude. And I think we're all gonna miss him. I know I do for sure. Uh, being in Vegas definitely isn't the same without my man. So uh, the uh, the the pony for a lifetime achievement award, uh, as you know, goes goes to Barnaby Jack. And he wouldn't want all you cunts, uh, you know, moping around. So go have a go have a fucking drink and you know, be happy. Okay. Well, I don't know what I can say to follow this up. Um, it's not really the best time to be making more jokes, but um, actually, I'll say, I'll say. <laughs> can't make jokes. No, I'm not gonna make yeah. jokes. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. So that's that's what we got. Hope you enjoy the ponies. Okay. And uh, so. <laughs> one more note about Barnaby. So this is the last of the original edition ponies. You'll notice the new ones are smaller but they have little crystals on their ass which is pretty awesome. <laughs> um, but this one, huh? No, no one will ever live up to this last pony. This one goes to Barnaby and we're actually going to try and get it to his sister. So um, I'm going to get that thing drunk tonight. <laughs> yes. And finally, there is a charity fund for Barnaby's family that has been set up. I've tweeted the link. I'll tweet it again. Um, if you spend more on booze this week than you've donated to that, uh, don't do that. Donate some money, you cheap bastard. <laughs> you cheap bastard, says Chris. So I will cease guilt tripping you now um, and uh, go have fun. <laughs>